What's up guys? So we are back and I can't tell you, I am super excited today. We are out here at Fetty's Street Food. This is ethnic food. This is cuisine that you're not gonna be able to find everywhere. It is Indian, African, and Thai mix. So I am so excited for what we're gonna get today. Anytime um, you are able to get ethnic food that is outside of your local region, you should try it. So that's what we are going to do today. Um, we know the owner, this is his truck, so he is going to advise me on what I should eat today. He's gonna hook us up. I'm so ready to taste this, y'all, so stay tuned. Okay, Alrighty. first time here, what should I get? Okay, so my recommendation is one of everything. Uh, <laughs> okay. No, um, Chris Penang's most popular. Okay. Um, the General Tso's is kind of like a Thai take on the General Tso's. Okay, a Thai taste. Just salty or just sweet, it's a little salty, sweet, sour. Okay, really good. okay. That's probably my favorite because it's something I never grew up eating. Okay, yeah, okay. Most popular, Bunny Chow always sells out. Oh so yeah? Like an Indian style curry in a bread bowl. That's Ooh. pretty good, especially for like a colder day. Okay. And then the chili panier is a veggie option, but delicious. Okay. And then uh, the samosas go well with everything okay no okay so not necessarily answering your question but but kind of kind of so, okay so can i do something different can i do like a half portion of the general sauce because you recommended it and then the bunny chow sounds amazing so a half a portion of that i can do that okay all right so excited cool thank Good. you so i asked him to do something special i asked him to mash up two of his favorites the um general sauce chicken which is not like a typical asian take on a general sauce it's more like an african take on a general sauce so i'm super excited about that he said it's a little sweet and a little tangy so i asked him to do a half portion of that and then a half portion of the item he said he sells out of all the time it's called bunny chow right and it's like a butter chicken and i've had butter chicken but this is this is it so i'm so excited all right guys so we're at fetty street food today ethnic food thai indian and african the owner is from south africa i'm so excited about this this is their number one seller they sell it all the time it's also served uh with traditionally with a side of bread i ain't need the bread i'm trying to wash my carbs because i'm eating some of this rice but it normally will come like in a bread bowl but it is a butter chicken if y'all have ever had butter chicken oh my god i'm so excited so they call it bunny chow but it's butter chicken and normally comes in a bread bowl so we're gonna get into all of this all right into the general souls first mm. let me get some of this rice and the sauce mm. so so good okay so he was right not like a traditional general souls it's like a mix between a gravy and a general sauce sauce. It's not nearly as sweet as a traditional general sauce would be, but it's definitely loaded with flavor. The chicken is so tender. It's like falling apart. You see the chives in there. It is so good, y'all. Mm. Mm. So much flavor. Now I'm going to taste some of the bunny chow. I love that name. That's another thing too, like creative names for your dishes, always a win. Mm. Oh my God, it's exploding with flavor. So there's definitely a, a tomato base there. I taste that. I taste a little bit of spice. There are some beans in here, which go amazing with the chicken that is in here. Mm. It's just packed with flavor. You can taste <laughs> the ethnicity in the food. That's the thing about going to ethnic trucks. Like you taste the food from where they come from. It's so amazing. It's so good. Just packed with so many flavors. You see the spices in there. You can see all of the spices in there. All fresh. Mm, so amazing. Right, guys so one thing you have to understand as a food truck owner is you're going to have different segments on how to operate how to serve this here where we're at today is what's considered um, a smaller food truck park so as you'll see in the video uh there's what one two three four 
six trucks here, a variation of different food. Uh, we're visiting this truck here today, but these are different places. To, these are different ways that you serve, opposed to what people traditionally think is this is one truck serving a thousand people. So you have to understand going into it, what's my volume going to look like? How much should I prep? Um, you're going to prep more for a situation like this than you would in a normal stationary where you're by yourself. Just because this place has a, a higher propensity of volume, but some of the other places might have volume where you're the only truck too. And you only know that by either asking the host of that event or being there before and knowing what you did the last time. Now when I come back the second time, here's how I need to prepare. This is the la actually the last week for this, and we're here kind of early, so it doesn't look as busy as it will be here in about an hour. But this is a really good area for this. It's a downtown, it's a central area. There's a lot of corporate businesses here that have tons of employees that will walk down in the central place here. And people have a lot of fun here. There's a concert venue in the back here. Um, they, they do a lot here. So this is a good venue for a food truck. Uh, and they only invite a certain amount of trucks every year. They rotate them, but they know who the good ones are and who aren't. So the information I'm giving you now is so you can be one of the good ones and you can get invited to a situation like this where you can do high volume and I think they only come here once a week, but it's a, one of the locations that you want to have. But wait, there's more. So I was saying that my big, two biggest pieces of advice is buy the most expensive truck you can afford. Like if you've got $5,000 to spend, double it. Mm -hmm. And then even think to double that again. Like put more money into the truck than anything else. The equipment you can buy secondhand. Um, everything else you can buy and slowly build up. But the truck, once you've got it, it's got to be good. That's the first piece of advice. The second piece of advice is don't rush to be out by June. Open up in November. Mm -hmm. And if you're in the Southern Hemisphere, flip it around, open up in like May. But open up when it's cold and figure your shit out. Um, and then you'll be, able to, you'll be able to figure out where you need to go and how things need to work for you. And that way, you know, you're not stuck at a busy event finding your feet. All right, guys, I just want to quickly elaborate on what he just said, because it's really important that you don't rush into learning how you're going to run your service. OK, if you want to start in the summer, you know, that's fine. But you have to understand that the summertime is the busiest part of the season. And June is usually the busiest month of the season. Now, if you're if you're in a warm weather state or a warm weather um, side of the country or side of the world, you know, it's really, really no real difference. Um, I mean, I'm sure you get colder days than some hotter days, you know what I mean? But for the most part, you got the you got the better weather so you can practice through all that. But if you are in a area where you get the seasons, the fall, the summer, spring, winter, all that stuff, it's probably not as advantageous for you to start off during the busiest months because unless you learn really fast, you're going to make a lot of mistakes when you have a bunch of people in your face versus starting in the slower months and then you can get through those tweaks and you can get through you know those learning curves and all that kind of stuff so then when the busy season comes now you're ready to roll you're strong you're efficient and i, I explain a lot of this how to do this inside of my uh course that i teach it's called the food truck bible i teach people how to go from a to z how to fast track how to get everything done from start to bottom or from top to bottom what to think about, how to, you know, look at all that stuff. I teach that inside the course. But here, um, depending on how you learn and depending on how you work, it may not be ideal for you to start off at the end of the spring, beginning of the summer, or start during the summer. You may want to start a little bit earlier just so you can get a couple shifts, a couple services under your belt, and you can go back and say, okay, I need to tweak this, I need to tweak that. Here's the best way that that worked. Here's the best way that the other thing worked. Here's what didn't work. You know that. So when you might, you know, when you might get into festival time or you might get into some festivals or some food truck parks or some, um, you know, you're going to work with other trucks at some point. So when you get into those, you're not the one that looks crazy because your thing is just a complete, a complete disaster. OK, so if if possible, and I know everybody's situation is different, but you may want to start during a slower part of the year just so you can get those reps under your belt and then go into the busy parts uh full guns blazing you know so thanks for watching this video like subscribe share do all that stuff because there's there's need for this sort of information for those who want to get into the industry and they want to get in successfully and also go to the foodtruckbible.com i have a free master class there where i give you five secrets away for free one of them is how to make guaranteed money so go there check that out i'm sure you'll enjoy it and then we'll see you on the next video